Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs, Membership, and Marketing at the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion about engineering education reform. I'm joined today by Dr. Norman Fortenberry, the Executive Director of the American Society for Engineering Education. Norman has a long career in education, beginning with a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree from MIT, a mechanical engineering faculty position at Florida A&M University, Florida State University College of Engineering, executive director of the National Consortium for Graduate Degrees for Minorities in Engineering and Science, Incorporated, and more recently, founding director of the Center for Advancement of Scholarship on Engineering Education at the National Academy of Engineering. Norman, your organization is in the process of a multi-year series of meetings to gather input from experts in the field and develop a new strategy for undergraduate engineering education that meets the industry's needs for the 21st century. After the first meeting last year, ASWE released a report called Transforming Undergraduate Education in Engineering. Can you discuss the findings of that report with us? Sure. Um, the effort really, uh, and this was an NSF, uh, National Science Foundation supported effort, uh, was really an effort to better understand uh, what industry is seeking. Uh, much as was the case when uh, there was a transition for the change in accreditation criteria under ABET 2000, this is an effort to really understand what are the outcome goals that industry is seeking, uh, what are uh, other, in terms of the, the multi uh, year effort, what are the uh, desires and needs of other stakeholders, and then how can faculty go about adjusting the curricula to meet those needs while also ensuring the rigor and acceptability of the curriculum. The outcomes of the study then uh, really emphasized uh, things that we've heard uh, over the years, that there is a desire for uh, students who have uh, not only great technical depth, but also some breadth in their uh, studies. Uh, but also a desire, or, or to refine that, a desire for systems level thinking um, and a desire to provide more uh, hands-on experiences within an industry uh, for students. What are some of the changes uh, to the curriculum and approach that educators are, are looking at? Many educators are now using concept inventories to assess student learning, so it's not enough to simply get to the answer, you need to understand the underlying principles that mm -hmm. justify that answer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for ways to build in learning experiences that emulate uh, real-world practice uh, so that when students get out, it's not simply they look at a problem and say, that's not like one of the homework problems I had in school. They have an ability to structure and define a problem as well as to step through a solution. Your report looks at recommendations for educating engineers in the future. Yes. What are the take-homes for today's practicing engineers in their companies? How might this report affect, affect their practice? Practitioners, uh, practicing engineers, uh, I think the main takeaways are to maintain close contacts or as close as they can with their local colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. um, we want to provide students with uh, real-world inspired, if not real-world problems. A number of universities have uh, capstone design uh, uh, courses where they incorporate activities from local industry. Uh, I think we need to move that down farther into the curriculum and begin doing, th or continue doing things at the junior and sophomore level, possibly even the freshman level. It's important that uh, local practitioners, uh, practicing engineers, uh, engage with faculty on their research activities to build that uh, real-world knowledge into the faculty knowledge base so that faculty can then translate that down to their students. You know, the old engineering paradigm was to teach, you know, all the math and the science and, you know, cram that into the, into the first two years and not get to the real engineering until, you know, the latter half of the undergraduate experience. Um, this may have driven off, you know, some of the students, you know, from, from engineering. So how, do, how does the ASWE report address uh, that aspect of, of engineering education? So the report doesn't specifically address that aspect. It's more on a focus on outcome goals, not mm -hmm. how we get there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the type of thing that you mentioned uh, is very important, has been recognized for a while now. And so there really is an effort uh, to, to vertically integrate the curriculum and make sure that students are as exposed as early as possible. Uh, to an integrated view of engineering. We understand that they may not have the requisite uh, mathematics or science to fully solve a problem, mm -hmm. but they can at least set one up er and talk it through. And so there's increased recognition on campuses about that, and campuses are increasingly doing that. 
What changes do you expect to see within engineering as a result of these recommendations, and when do you think we'll see them? I think the changes within the practice of engineering uh, uh, that we will see really will be reflected in uh, the interactions among engineering professionals, mm -hmm. and most particularly the interactions between engineers and non-engineers. Mm -hmm. The whole goal here, I mean, one of the things we always say about engineering is you can be technically brilliant, but if you can't communicate that to the client or the customer or a constituent, uh, then nobody cares. And you won't get it funded, you won't get it completed, you won't get the mm -hmm. permits, et cetera. So uh, enhancing the ability of engineers to interact with various sets of constituents mm -hmm. will be a key outcome of this effort. Norman, thank you for joining us today for a very interesting discussion. For more information, visit ASC's website at ASC.org. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASC Interchange.